we're going to go back to sea level again, and we're jumping around a bit because I'm following the same order as Professor Abraham was following. And this is the question, how fast sea level is rising? And this slide is what uh, the professor shows. And what it shows is sea level rising in really something, it's not a straight line, but it's certainly not an ever-increasing rate of sea level rise. It's just rising perfectly steadily at around, I suppose, somewhere between eight inches and a foot per century. Nothing to, to worry about. And what um, the professor says about his own slide is, this slide presents data taken from the uh, Australia's Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organisation, and here you can see a quotation, sea level is rising as a result of increasing concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Sea level rise contributes to coastal erosion and inundation of low-lying coastal regions, particularly during extreme sea level events. And you can see that both measurements, tide gauge and satellite altimetry, show an increase in sea levels in the past 100 years. That's another organisation that would disagree with Chris Monckton's conclusion. Maybe he knows more than they do. I'll leave you uh, to judge that. That's what he's accusing me of. Now, the reason why he suddenly talks about sea level rise is, is in a previous slide I had mentioned Professor Niklas Murnau, and I'd mentioned in passing that he had found that in the Maldives over the last 10 years there's been no sea level rise. Indeed, there's been none for 1,250 years in the Maldives, as best he can make it out, that sea level is falling in Bangladesh. These are particular measurements, but he, he perfectly well accepts that sea level has been rising over the last hundred years, and I never said otherwise. But no, here we are once again with a straw man being set up by Professor Abraham where he says that I claimed that sea level rise wasn't in fact occurring. Now, in an earlier slide that we saw, and I'll show it to you here again, I showed the sea level record going back over the last 30 or 40 years and showing quite plainly that sea level is right, in fact, going back since 1993, not as far back as I said, so from 1993, and sea level rising at a rate of around one foot per century. Now, if I show a graph like that, showing that sea level has been rising at one foot per century, then it's no good turning round and trying to say that I was say, saying that sea level hasn't been rising for a hundred years. There's no basis for any such allegation. But he made it anyway. Why? Because he hoped he could get away with it. He hoped that by putting out a really long presentation, I wouldn't have the time or the inclination to go through it. He could leave it there and then say to everyone, look at all the scientific mistakes that Moncton makes. But all of the so-called scientific mistakes that Moncton makes are scientific mistakes that Abraham makes by deliberately, and there can be no other word for it, but deliberately misstating what I actually said in my talk. And I don't find that acceptable in a professor addressing a layman in this way. And so he talks about the uh, CSIRO slide. He says um, that it's a 100-year data record. His own slide actually shows that it's a, an 1870 to 2000, which the last time I did math would have come out at 130 years and not the 100 he states. And if he can be picky, well, so can I. And what he doesn't seem to be aware of, but then, of course, he's not a climatologist either. He's a bit like railroad engineer Pachori. He is somebody in a field which doesn't actually have all that much contact with climate change. Uh, so he, he won't be aware, perhaps, that sea level change is highly variable around the world, and it depends on numerous factors that vary considerably from place to place, so that these days, sea level change is determined by satellite altimetry. That's the most accurate way to do it. And so, merely because I mention a result by one of the most distinguished sea level researchers in the world, Professor Murner, in passing, though, of course, the professor doesn't mention that I did mention it only in passing, isn't that an inappropriate argument on the professor's part from the particular to the general? So it's right, other way around, from the general to the particular, I should say. And accordingly, it's an instance of the fallacy of accident, one of the Aristotelian logical fallacies, which are too often perpetrated by the lesser sort of climate, climate extremist scientists these days, because they haven't had a classical training, and they haven't been taught how to think straight. 
I'm being kind in assuming it's that way round, rather than at this point the professor is, as so often elsewhere in his talks, deliberately misstating what is said in my talk. So he states that the CSIRO is expressing an opinion that sea level is rising as a result of the increasing concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. But no evidence is presented, either in the slide or in the quotation from the CSIRO, for a causative link between anthropogenic global warming and sea level rise, still less for a quantitative link between the two. And if you look at that CSIRO slide, it is very clear that there is no great increase in, in the rate of sea level rise in the second half of the 20th century to match the great increase in CO2 concentration that has happened and the increase in temperature that we've also seen over the last 30 years or so. There's simply been a steady conti continuation of the pre-existing rate of sea level rise and no particular increase in that rate of rise at all. And that should raise questions in the CSIRO's mind and indeed in the professor's mind, were he a climatologist, as to whether or to what extent the extra CO2 we're adding to the atmosphere can be influencing sea level. The answer, as best I can see from looking at the actual data, rather than listening to what the CSIRO and other people say about the data, is that we don't have anything very much to worry about from sea level rise. And indeed, that is what Professor Myrna tells me whenever I consult him on the subject. And he has looked at this now for more than a third of a century and has written hundreds of papers on the subject. So given the extremely poor correlation in, in between changes in the rate of sea level rise as shown in your CSIRO graph on the one hand and the global temperature record on the other, and the still poorer correlation between the steady increase in CO2 concentration and the very erratic stochastic increases and decreases in global temperature over the same period, then one would have to do considerably further work before the CSIRO's conclusion, however eminent the scientists who stated their conclusion, could possibly be regarded as reliably proven. Mm -hmm.